Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Borofsky, for once again coming before our committee. But let me thank you as well for the service that you have given in, this, uh, in, in, in looking at this issue in, in such scope, a, a tremendous challenge to our country when it happened, but the healthy capacity to then look back at what happened and ask the kinds of difficult questions that allow us to, to consider the implications of, of all that happened so quickly with such remarkable significance, uh, you know, at the height of the, the, the challenge to our financial system. So I appreciate your service to our nation, uh, and I thank you for, uh, for it and, and, and wish you the best of luck as you move into uh, the next part, but, but, but thank you for your contribution. And I know that you would say as well that that is something that has been a, a great part of it, has been the work that you have done, but you have been supported by some other fine people as well, some of whom I have known from prior existence, and I want to compliment them, too, on the great work that they have done with you uh, for, your, for your work. But, look, you have studied this. You have spent time really looking at the big picture and have had the chance to sit back, maybe more than many of the people here in Congress have. And you made a comment talking about unless there is dramatic and quick action, we are going to head down a path. And that is a very concerning observation to me. Can you identify what you mean by dramatic and quick action or what you think we ought to be doing here in Congress to, to uh, protect against the kind of concern that you have identified in your testimony? Well, first of all, thank you for, for your kind comments. And, and it, is, it is certainly true. Um, I am the one who gets to sit at the table and I am the one who gets to take the credit for our successes and the blame for our failures. But it doesn't happen with, without the people at SIGTARP and the senior staff. And, and yes, we have both benefited from, from one individual, um, you as, as United States Attorney. Um, of course, that is my, 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 my Chief of Staff, Jeff Moulton, uh, who has uh, been you know, wonderful for our organization and deeply appreciative. Um, but as, as, as to your question, what I was referring to is I think we have to stay here within the realm of the possible. And I could go back and, and, and say that there are certain things um, that could have been done with Dodd-Frank, um, things like that were suggested in the Senate by Senators Brown and Kaufman um, that, that could have made this a better protecting against uh, too big to fail. But here in the realm of where we are today, there is a path. That, um, that has a better chance than most of succeeding, and that is the one that is being advocated by, by Sheila Baird, outgoing chair of the FDIC. And it is ultimately not a very dramatic um, or, you know, departure. It really is just fulfilling the mandate of Dodd-Frank. And what she has said is that you know, part of, the, part of the, the, the proposals is these living wills, where the banks are required to come up with plans of how they would be resolved in the, in the event of a financial crisis. And she came out with something and has been saying this over and over again, uh, which on its face does not appear to be very controversial. See, she says, in order for us to carry out the mandate of Dodd-Frank, in order for us to really address too big to fail, we need to use these provisions. And if banks come up with things that are not sufficiently credible, not just to us, but to the markets, um, so that they can be resolved in a meaningful way, then we need to use the powers of Dodd-Frank to simplify and shrink those institutions. And she's had stronger language than that in, on other occasions. Um, what is remarkable about this is the deafening silence with which has been met by the other regulators, the other members of the Financial Stability Oversight Council, including as Chairman Secretary Tim Geithner. Um, this is a path that at least has a chance of working, because you know, ultimately they are too complex, they are too large. And the, you know, I think uh, Chairman Greenspan said you know, famously in the, the beginning of this crisis, too big to fail starts with too big. And it is not always too big. That, that would be an oversimplification. It is interconnectedness. It is a number of other things. But it is a really, really good place to start. But it really does appear that what is happening with Chairman Baer's suggestion is that the others are playing the equivalent of a regulatory game of running out the clock. They say nothing, they do nothing, and the bottom line is that she is not going to be able to institute those changes before she steps down over the course of the summer. And those, even those plans aren't going to be coming in, in, you know, in, a, in a matter of, of, of six months. It could be a year before anything happens. Um, so what, what would be an example of dramatic change? How about a strong endorsement from the Secretary of the Treasury, from the Chairman of the, of the Federal Reserve and others, that, that Chairman Baer's 
suggestion is going to be adopted. Perhaps this can help chip away at the market's perception that resolution authority is somewhat of a joke. I mean, if you look at the language that Moody's used in rejecting the idea that we're going that Dodd Frank is going to work, going to somehow end too big to fail, that, it, that this resolution authority is going to work, um, it is striking language. It is not just a passive rejection, it is a complete rejection. Well, well, Moody's is one of the groups that has actually included within their analysis the idea that the government is actually going to bail out the right, They absolutely is not. I mean, they, this is part of the problem that we are looking at. Absolutely. They reject that this is, this is really going to happen. So it <clears throat> is a, a minor first step, but I think if we start by the government officials who are in charge of implementing Dodd-Frank, instead of issuing what are, are basically, um, I'm sorry, empty statements that this is going to end too big to fail, as we know it, we're never going to have to bail out anyone again, citing to different provisions in the law, which I'm, 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 which I've heard and I'm sure you'll hear again that oh well here this law says we can't bail out, so therefore there'll never be a bailout. I mean, let's start with you know a, an articulated articulated plan similar to the one advocated by Chairman Baer saying, okay, this is how we are going to do this. We are going to simplify and shrink these institutions so we can have a credible response to the market that we are not going to bail them out. Because right now, the empty rhetoric, we are not going to bail these banks out, the market is not buying it. And you can actually measure whether or not your statements are effective or not. All you have to do is look at what the credit rating agencies say, look at what the spread is, how much cheaper the, the, the benefit is, how much cheaper it is for the big banks to raise capital. I mean, there are things you can actually look to. And while it is unfortunate that credit rating agencies still have so much power and so much influence, um, that is the sad reality of where we are today. Um, and I think that there has to be an, it has to start with an increase in rhetoric, and then it has to be backed up by, by demonstrated action to, to fulfill that rhetor those rhetorical promises. But right now we're, we don't really have any of that. What we have is is a lot of discussion about you know endless rulemaking that 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 will accomplish some goal, um, a real sense of incrementalism. We'll do a little bit here and a little bit there, and maybe eventually the incentives will be in place that these banks may may re may reduce in size. Um, and I I'm, I personally believe that Chairman Baer's approach is is the better one. The gentleman's time has expired. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh,